part B, we're going to look at the inner loop of r equals 2 plus 4 sine theta. If you remember, uh, that is the form of a limason. So uh, I advise graph that in Desmos before you do anything and maybe give yourself a sketch. Although you might not need to do that either. Um, by the way, on your test, you will be allowed to use Desmos, of course. I probably mentioned that in a previous video. Okay. The inner loop r equals 2 plus 4 sine theta. Well, the graph is this. All right, so there's our polar axis. It's the type of limason. It's probably like kind of what most people think of when they think of a limason. Uh, it comes back and it has this inner loop. It doubles back inside of itself. And if you thought, you know, just about the way this was traced out, well, if you begin at zero, uh, then you'll have a radius of two. So sine zero is two, right? Or sine zero is zero, leaving you with just the two. As you come to pi over two, well, sine pi over two is one. So you end up all the way out at six. As you work your way over to pi, well, sine pi is zero, so you're back at a radius of two. But then something interesting happens. The radius begins to shrink, and at some point the radius is zero, kind of like in our last example. Then by the time you get to an angle of three pi over two, the radius is actually negative one. Well, sine three pi over two is negative one, so you'd have two minus four. Uh, is that right? Or is this back at, at 2 even? Sine 3 pi over 2, negative. Yeah, that's, oh, my mistake. So really, we're looking down this way, but then it's pushing back in. Okay. Then it starts to work its way back around, and we go through radius of 0 again, it's a negative radius shrinking goes through zero then finally the radius becomes positive and we make it back around here here the period is 2 pi to get all the way uh, around that limason all right of course the inner loop is just right in here so what we want to do is identify when that inner loop begins and when does it end what are the angles that start the inner loop and then end the inner loop so as we think, okay, we're, we're moving around the limason, we're coming around, and right at that first moment here, as we draw back in, that's where it begins. So there's some angle that's tangent right there that pulls it back to a, a radius of zero. Then it's got a negative radius, and then it's gonna come around, and right there, it leaves the inner loop and goes positive again. So where do those seem to occur? And if you look closely uh, at Desmos and you've got the polar grid going on, this will occur at seven pi over six. And of course there's some symmetry happening here, but you might just look at the, at the grid. This is 11 pi over six. Always confirm these to be sure, because sometimes things can be deceiving. If I plug seven pi over six back in, do I really get a radius of zero? I'm just gonna grab my calculator. Uh, two plus four sine seven pi over six, and yep, uh, that would give me a radius of zero. And well, I'm feeling pretty confident now but let me just plug in 11 pi over six, and yeah, that's giving me zero as well. So those are the two moments where um, my radius is zero. That's my starting and ending. So this, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's this angle there. It's just we happen to have a negative radius the whole way. Okay. So what do we do? 
with that. Well, uh, I mean, really, that's the hard part. Uh, that can be the most difficult part uh, of any of these, just identifying those angles. And now it's just a matter of executing the integral, just a matter of. So we could say, hey, let's do 1 half. 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6. And then we've got our, uh, our function, 2 plus 4 sine theta quantity squared d theta. Now, some of you might be thinking, hey, couldn't we use symmetry again here? Maybe we could just do like the right side of that inner loop and go from 7 pi over 6 to, well, that'd be 3 pi over 2 if you wanted to do that. You could do that, certainly, and double everything. Although here, I don't know if that's really a whole much of, of an advantage. Uh, if we take advantage of zero, you know, that's to use the symmetry, that's really nice. Seven pi over six to three pi over two. It might make plugging in later uh, a little bit a little bit simpler. I think it will. Um, I'm just gonna stick to, to the seven pi over six, 11 pi over six, and just do the whole thing without doubling. But you could certainly do symmetry if you want it. Okay, let's try it out. Now this limason, the integral, is gonna get a little bit more, there's gonna be a little more to it since we're adding there. So of course we need to begin by foiling. Uh, so foiling all that, well that'd be four plus 16 sine theta, uh, when we do the middle terms, right, plus 16 sine squared theta. And now what? Well, these first two, four plus 16 sine theta, they're ready to go. We're ready to take antiderivatives. This one though needs the trig identity. So let's split those apart into separate integrals. And I'm, let's see what it is. I did multiple things over here. Okay, so I just brought these down as their own integral. When we make the second integral, remember there's this one half. So don't forget that that one half needs to go to that integral as well. I also pulled out the 16 and I turned the sine squared into one minus cos two theta over two. Okay, so we've got a lot going on here. Um, I think I'm gonna tackle this antiderivative. I'm doing it all at quite a bit at one shot here. Well, let's see, okay, antiderivatives. Well, okay, so the one half comes down, then we got the four theta, uh, 16 sine theta would have come from negative 16 cos theta, and then we'll plug in. What's going on over here? Well, I went ahead and multiplied those, and then I also pulled this one half out so that gave me just a four. And I went ahead and did the antiderivative of my numerator there at the same time. So one became theta, negative cos two theta became negative one half sine two theta. And then we've got our limits there again. following along with me. Of course, uh, feel free to show more steps than me. All right, at this point, we'll plug the numbers in. And you know, these aren't the most natural angles, um, but they're not terrible either. And then we're multiplying by fours and 16s and halves. Um, so let's, let's see how this works out. Uh, the first one, well, 11 pi over 6 times 4, 22 pi over 3, plugging it in here. I um, believe that got me root 3 over 2, but then we multiplied by 16, so 8 root 3. Then plugging in the 7 pi over 6, well, that gives you times 4 gives you 14 pi over 3. 
7 pi over 6 into cos theta gives you negative root 3 over 2, so times negative 16 plus 8 root 3. Okay, all that's multiplied by the half. Then plus the 4. And down here, well, okay, plugging in 11 pi over 6 uh, there. Well, that'd be root 3 over negative root 3 over 2 times negative a half plus root 3 over 4. Subtract, put the 7 over 6 in, plugging it into the sine 2 theta. Um, okay, would give uh, root 3 over 2 times the negative half. All right. So work through these methodically. Obviously, we've got our calculators to help us out with that. Um, and then I just went for it. So putting that all in <laughs> and simplifying, you end up with 4 pi minus 6 radical 3. All right, so hopefully you got the same thing. Hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. There you go. That is the inner loop of that Lima song. Well, you know, you might see there's other types of problems you're gonna see in homework. It's gonna be, you know, all, lots of different varieties. What if they asked for the area between the loops? What would that look like? Let's just think about how it would be set up. So here's, here's all my notes on that. So I've got a quick drawing there. What would What's between the loops look like? Well, inside of the outer loop, but not the inner loop. So all this all the way around. And you see I've noted the two angles um, there as well. Okay. How are we going to find that area? Well, it turns out we need, we'll find the area of the outer loop, but then we'll need to subtract the inner loop. Why is that? So if you think of, you know, starting here and tracing around this way, it's going to, it's going to get all of the area inside that outer loop, which will fill in that middle. So it's just going to sweep across everything. So then we'll need to go back and subtract the area where it doubles back inside of itself. So area of the outer loop minus the area of the inner loop. What would that look like with the integrals? Well, I'll just show you the limits of integration. Here's how you might find the outer loop for this function. We, we don't want to think of it as 11 pi over 6. Okay, so we're going to begin here and sweep around to the other side. But we can't use 11 pi over 6 to 7 pi over 6 because that would actually just end up working back this way. We need to think of, you know, going forwards. So we'll think of this thing as negative pi over 6 and then moving all the way around to 7 pi over 6. And that will get us the outer loop. Then we'll subtract and we'll do the same thing we just did, 7 pi over 6 to 11 pi over 6, subtracting that inner area. Um, and all in all, you end up going around 2 pi. Makes sense, you know, when you count the two most extreme places. Uh, all right, hey, let's stop this video here. We got one more to look at, and then arc length in the next one.